Hello, in this video I'm going to show how it's possible to migrate uh, an Apache Kafka cluster from Zookeeper to Craft uh, by using StreamZ. So it means that uh, you have your own uh, Kafka cluster operated by the StreamZ uh, operator, so running on Kubernetes. The cluster is Zookeeper based and now we want to migrate uh, to Craft. Uh, before going uh, mm, to show uh, how the um, support that uh, StreamZ provides in terms of uh, craft migration, uh, let's see how in general the craft uh, migration works. So it means uh, what is the procedures, what are the steps that you have to follow in order to migrate in general your Kafka cluster from using Zookeeper to craft. If uh, your cluster is running on bare metal nodes or on virtual machines and so on. So um, we are starting uh, from a situation where uh, we have um, our um, Apache Kafka cluster with uh, three uh, brokers and it's using a Zookeeper ensemble made by three Zookeeper nodes in order to store the metadata uh, for the cluster. So by metadata we mean like uh, the, the cluster membership, so what are the brokers within the cluster or uh, which broker is the controller or information about the topics configuration or for example the ACLs, so the access control list in order to authorize, uh, authenticate and authorize the clients connecting to the cluster in order to read and write uh, from and to the topics um, or the quotas uh, for handling uh, CPU and network resource and so on. So all the kind of uh, cluster metadata they are stored in Zookeeper. Uh, with this arrow we show that the metadata flow is kind of always going from the brokers to Zookeeper. So uh, when we create a topic, for example, uh, it's done through the um, Kafka tool CLI, but then uh, all the data are going uh, to Zookeeper in order to be stored, right? Of course, there is uh, also the flow on the other way around from Zookeeper to broker, but it's more a kind of internal details when, for example, there is a cluster failover, so um, a broker failover failover in general. So when a broker, uh, a controller, for example, has to restart and on restarting it has to reload the metadata from Zookeeper. But in this case we are more focused on uh, where the topics are stored, where the uh, ACLs, uh, well all the quotas, so all the kind of metadata are stored right now. And it happens going from broker to Zookeeper. Uh, just before moving forward, let me just highlight that uh, this um, uh, green box um, on the brokers with the number inside represents a kind of uh, generation of the brokers because during the migration you have to up update uh, the broker configuration, you have to roll the brokers one by one, so that number will be increased uh, every time you roll the broker in order to make a distinction between uh, this is a new uh, kind of um, uh, incarnation of the broker because it was rolled compared to the previous one. Now, the first step for the migration is, of course, deploying the craft controllers. So in this case, we are going to deploy three craft controllers because we want uh, these controllers to replace our three nodes Zookeeper and SAM. So at uh, the startup these controllers uh, are configured in order to be connected to Zookeeper so they have the Zookeeper connection details and they also have uh, the Zookeeper migration flag enabled. As soon as they start, nothing happened because the craft controllers are kind of waiting for the brokers to register. Only when the brokers are registered to the controllers, then the migration can start. So the first step is updating the broker's configuration uh, in order to um, set the connection to the craft controllers, to the quorum, to the craft quorum, and also uh, enable the Zookeeper uh, migration flag on the brokers themselves. So at this point what's happening is um, we upgrade the configuration on the brokers and we roll the brokers uh, one by one. So the brokers uh, enter in a kind of a hybrid phase where some are connected to the keeper, some others are uh, uh, already even connected to controllers and so on. So the end state is this one where as you can see here 
the brokers were rolled, so we are in a kind of incarnation too. They are still connected to Zookeeper, but uh, between the brokers and Zookeeper, there's just a connection because uh, it's a way to allow the rollback of the procedure if you want, so, so to revert back. But actually, uh, the brokers, when start, the first thing that they do, register to the to the craft controllers, and when all the uh, brokers are registered to the craft controllers, the migration can start. So the leader uh, start the migration. Migration means that uh, the controller, the active controller, so the leader is going to copy all the Zookeeper metadata from the Zookeeper ensemble to the cluster metadata topic, and then. Uh, as you know, in Craft, uh, the cluster metadata is then replicated to the other um, controllers which are follower for the active, for the leader. So when the metadata ends, um, we uh, end uh, in a situation where um, the metadata flow at this point is uh, um, going through the craft, ca the craft controllers and not Zookeeper anymore. So in this case, if we create a new topic, for example, with the Kafka CLI tool, what's happening is that um, um, all the information goes through the craft controllers, but then, so they, they are stored in the cluster metadata topic first, but then uh, they are also copied to the Zookeeper, to the Zookeeper ensemble. Um, the next step then is kind of um, um, removing the um, connection between the Zookeeper nodes and the brokers because we want the brokers to work actually just using the craft um, quorum. So we are going to update the broker's configuration by removing the connection to Zookeeper, by removing the Zookeeper migration flag, and then rolling the brokers one by one. So this is where we end. We end in a situation where the brokers um, are rolled. You can see the new kind of incarnation, incarnation tree. Uh, they are just connected to the controllers. There is uh, no connection uh, uh, anymore to uh, the zookeeper. And, uh, but um, the, um, the, the, the craft controllers are still working in a kind of dual write phase because they are still writing all the metadata changes in zookeeper as well. Why? Because uh, we are still able in this phase to decide that we want to revert back. We want to roll back. We don't want to move to craft, but we want to come back again to Zookeeper. The procedure from this point will be kind of uh, the, the same, but uh, reverting the steps. So reconfiguring the brokers in order to be connected to Zookeeper with the Zookeeper migration flag enabled and so on. But this is uh, the last chance that you have in order to make your decision to roll back. Because the final step in order to finalize the migration will be, at this point, disconnecting the craft controllers from the Zookeeper ensemble. It means uh, that uh, you have to update all the craft controllers configuration in order to remove the Zookeeper uh, connection details, removing the Zookeeper migration flag, and then rolling the controllers. Uh, after this step, this is where uh, the cluster ends. So we have a new incarnation of the controllers. You can see the number two uh, in the green box. And at this point, um, everything is kind of working just using craft. So you have a uh, craft-based cluster. Uh, the Zookeeper nodes can even be removed because they are out of the picture. No one is using the Zookeeper nodes, nor the brokers, nor the controllers. But yeah, you have just completely your migration and uh, you can't roll back anymore. So this is in general how the craft migration works, which means a lot of different upgrades that you have to make on the brokers first and on the controllers, uh, connection details about Zookeeper, the Zookeeper migration flag, the controllers uh, connection details and so on, and rolling the brokers first and the controllers then one or more time. Of course, it's not kind of a really simple uh, uh, procedure, but yeah, this is uh, how it works. Uh, at this point, uh, mm, let's introduce, before moving to the demo, uh, let's introduce how uh, the StreamZ operator supports 
the migration in a kind of really simple way. So avoiding all these manual steps to the user, but uh, um, just applying um, uh, a couple of values to a specific annotation. And then the operator will take care of uh, making the configuration change and uh, rolling the brokers, the controllers, and so on. So in this uh, first slide, we can see uh, how, so we can see all the faces that we uh, shown before, and we can see that um, with the stream Z operator, starting from uh, the Zookeeper base cluster, the first thing is, um, um, first of all, uh, the Zookeeper base the cluster has to be using uh, uh, node pools, so it means that we are using a node pool for hosting the brokers. But uh, uh, in order to start the migration, the first thing is, uh, deploying a new node pool hosting the controllers. Uh, as soon as we do this kind of action, nothing happens until we apply on our Kafka custom resource this annotation. So the streamz.io slash craft with the migration value. From this point, the operator uh, takes care of everything. So it means that the first thing is going to deploy our craft controllers uh, from the, the node pool, establishing the connection with the Zookeeper um, nodes. Then uh, the brokers are uh, reconfigured in order to be connected to the craft controllers with the, the Zookeeper uh, um, migration flag enabled. The migration starts and the operator at this point uh, is kind of looking for you uh, if the migration is uh, still running or not. So it's checking uh, some metrics uh, which are really useful in order to understand if the migration is going on and um, how many um, yeah, nodes are, are migrated and ha so um, if everything is okay. So something that in the migration process uh, you have to do, but in this case is the operator doing that for you. When the migration ends, um, then we end in a state where uh, uh, the last step in order to finalize the migration is to change the annotation value um, of the streamz.io craft annotation from migration to enabled. At this point, the last step will be um, first uh, going to uh, roll the, um, the craft controllers um, so the brokers are not connected anymore to the uh, Zookeeper um, nodes so they are configured and rolled again and then rolling finally the controllers so that uh, even the controllers are not connected anymore to the Zookeeper nodes and the Zookeeper pods are also deleted. So there are no more resources in Kubernetes uh, related to the Zookeeper nodes, nothing. Everything is gone and migration is done. So it means just applying a couple of values on this annotation, you have uh, covered the entire migration process. The rollback uh, works kind of the same uh, way. Of course, uh, I removed some faces here because some of them are kind of a duplication in order to show uh, how so the migration running, but uh, the real faces are, I'm starting from this situation where the controllers are still um, connected to Zookeeper in dual ride mode. So um, we apply the rollback uh, value to the StreamZIO craft annotation. It means that the brokers will be configured to be connected again to Zookeeper with the Zookeeper migration flag enabled. And at this point, uh, uh, we end in this phase. The last step will be going to delete uh, the craft controllers node pool for the user and uh, setting this annotation to the disabled value. In this case, what happens is that uh, the operator will delete uh, the controller Z node from Zookeeper in order to allow one of the brokers now to elect a new controller, uh, which will be not anymore a craft controller because the controllers are, are gone. So at this point, the cluster will be again Zookeeper based. So again, two simple steps, just applying two uh, values for this kind of annotation in order to uh, also run the rollback process. So as you can see, StreamZ provides the real, this really simple way in order to um, run the migration, avoiding um, 
all the kind of manual steps, uh, uh, configuration changes, uh, nodes rolling that you have to do manually uh, on bare metals or uh, virtual machine based Kafka cluster. Now let's move on and see how it works in reality running a uh, demo. So what I have here is uh, a Kafka cluster, which is Zookeeper based, as you can see. Um, we have uh, three brokers, <coughs> the entity operator with the topic and the user operator, and we have three uh, Zookeeper. Uh, let's check um, how, um, so how the cluster is um, configured. So I have uh, uh, a Kafka node pool in order to run the three brokers uh, using uh, uh, JBOD uh, as a storage. And uh, at the same time, uh, I can also show um, how the Kafka custom resource look like. So um, we have all the kind of configuration like uh, the version, so 3.7, some listeners. Uh, we still uh, have uh, the uh, interbroker protocol version and the log message format version, which makes sense in Zookeeper. They um, don't make sense anymore uh, in Craft, and we will see that the, the, there is a need for removing this configuration parameter at the end. We have the, Zookee the Zookeeper uh, section uh, with the number of replicas, the storage, uh, and the entity operator or configuration. Um, say that let's move uh, forward and um, try to do something like this. Let's try to uh, create, for example, a topic uh, uh, in the cluster so that uh, we will see how this topic uh, will be uh, migrated uh, to be uh, in craft. So I'm running on one of the brokers uh, just to, to simplify everything. Uh, the creation of a topic, I'm calling this topic Zookeeper topic. Uh, so after creating the topic, we can uh, easily uh, run the describe common as well. So we can see the um, configuration and the number of replicas, the partitions, uh, the ISR and so on. And uh, at the same time, we can also double check that uh, this topic, uh, uh, and all the metadata related to this topic are stored in Zookeeper. So um, on one of the Zookeeper pod, uh, I can run the Zookeeper shell uh, command and getting uh, the corresponding Z node. And we can see here, for example, the configuration for this topic. Uh, but at the same time, we can also see the state for the partition zero, uh, for example. So we can see uh, the leader epoch, uh, the leader and the ISR. So what we have right now is uh, a kind of Zookeeper based cluster with one topic uh, and um, all the information about the topic, the metadata stored within Zookeeper. The next step will be, uh, in order to start the migration, will be to uh, deploy the node pool hosting the controllers. So this is the node pool hosting the controller. It's kind of a simple one, like the brokers one. So just uh, three controllers, they are using still JBOD. Uh, and I can go and um, apply this uh, um, resource. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, nothing is going to happen. So the operator is kind of waiting for me to annotate the Kafka custom resource this way in order to uh, start the migration. So we are annotating the Kafka custom resource with the migration value for the streamz.io slash craft annotation. And at this point, we can see on the other side that the operator will take care of deploying the controllers. So as I explained before, now the controllers are configured in order to be uh, connected to Zookeeper and with the, the Zookeeper migration flag enabled because our intention is uh, to use these controllers in order to start the migration as soon as the brokers will be registered to the controllers. So after deploying um, the controllers, the operator uh, here we see is going to roll the brokers for the first time. So uh, what's going to happen? The brokers uh, are configured to be connected to the craft uh, quorum. Uh, they also have uh, the uh, zookeeper uh, 
um, migration flag uh, uh, enabled and uh, when they are all rolled they are going to register to the controllers in order to uh, start uh, the migration so so that the migration actually can uh, start uh, and um, yeah the controllers uh, are going to move the metadata uh, from zookeeper to the cluster metadata topics so we are uh, still uh, in the first uh, uh, rolling because as we know um, after this first rolling the migration happens and it can take some time right but when the migration ends and in this case the migration will be kind of uh, really quick because we are just storing um, information about um, uh, the three brokers so the cluster membership uh, or for example just one topic the zookeeper topic that I created before so the migration will be uh, really fast but at the end of the migration what happens is that uh, the brokers uh, will be rolled again because uh, we want to disconnect the brokers from uh, uh, Zookeeper uh, and uh, not having the Zookeeper migration flag enabled anymore but we want the, con the brokers just connected to the controllers so we are almost at the end uh, of the first rolling um, now that the first rolling is done you can see the we can just checking what's the status uh, uh, of the cluster so it's in craft migration the migration is kind of happening and the operator is um, on each reconciliation loop is checking the metric in order to double check that to verify that the migration is done or is running at this point the migration is gone uh, and uh, the um, operator as you can see here is rolling the brokers again so migration um, was done uh, and now we are configuring the brokers to disconnect to not be connected to zookeeper anymore without the zookeeper migration flag enabled in order to have the brokers just working in craft mode so any uh, metadata change will happen uh, through the brokers um, going through the controllers uh, in the cluster metadata topic but it's also true that we are in the craft dual writing phase right where uh, the controllers uh, are going to anyway copying and writing all the metadata changes in uh, zookeeper as well uh, in order to show that when uh, the last uh, broker uh, will be rolled um, we can uh, do a couple of things so uh, the first thing is for example let's uh, kind of uh, double check uh, which controller uh, uh, which craft controller is now the active controller so we can see here it's uh, the broker um, ID uh, so the cluster uh, the, the, the controller with ID 4 is uh, the active controller and um, we can um, go and uh, double check uh, what's the content uh, of uh, the uh, cluster metadata topic if it's uh, reality that the migration happened so what I'm going to do is using the Kafka dump log tool uh, using even the decoder for the cluster metadata topic uh, this is the path where um, uh, Streamz configured the, the, um, where to store the Kafka logs uh, for this controller and we are grabbing uh, the topic record record so um, because the cluster metadata topic will be filled with event because uh, uh, the craft uh, metadata store works uh, in an event driven uh, way so uh, we have events generated that we can call of course records with uh, all the events uh, happening uh, in the cluster in terms of metadata change and so for example we can see this uh, topic record related to the uh, creation of the zookeeper topic so it was replicated to uh, was migrated to craft sorry uh, information about the configuration because other than using the default configurations we also create the topic with a, a specific configuration the retention millisecond time and because uh, uh, we have got uh, a topic with the three replicas and three partition we also have uh, three partition uh, records with information about uh, replicas the ISR the leader and so on so this explain uh, what happens the migration happened now the information about uh, the metadata uh, in terms of the 
topic that we created in Zookeeper mode were replicated uh, to be in craft uh, as well. At this point, uh, let's try to show that the cluster is working in dual write. So the controllers will be uh, write uh, all metadata chains from craft to the Zookeeper ensemble. Uh, as well. So for example, uh, just um, um, to simplify, on one of the brokers we can uh, create again a new topic, the same as we uh, run before for the Zookeeper based cluster. Uh, the topic will be named uh, craft topic, uh, just to show a different retention uh, millisecond configuration and we can still describe and we should see exactly that we have two topics now, the zookeeper topic and the craft topic with the corresponding configuration. Uh, as we did before, now, uh, we have created the topic, so everything uh, uh, in terms of metadata chains happen through the craft controller. So let's verify that. So let's go again to the active controller and look for uh, the cluster metadata topic records. And we can see after the zookeeper topic uh, uh, record that we already um, took a look before, we have a new topic record related to the new craft topic that we have just created, right? The corresponding configuration record and the corresponding partition records related to information about replicas, ISR and leaders uh, for the partitions of this topic. So everything is in craft, but um, how can we uh, show that this um, stuff was written as well in Zookeeper. Well, we can go on one of the Zookeeper nodes and using still the Zookeeper shell command, we can see that we can get information about the craft uh, topic now. So we could do something like uh, just listing, for example, this uh, Z node and see that now we have these two topics, right? Uh, and again, uh, still for the craft topic, uh, we can show information about the state of the partition zero, about the leader ISR, the leader epoch and so on. So this is how the cluster is working. It's in dual write mode. We created uh, a topic. It was created to craft, but the craft controllers are uh, writing this metadata information in uh, Zookeeper as well. At this point, we have to finalize uh, our migration. What we are going to do is just apply again a new value for the, for the same annotation, the stream is the craft, but this time the value will be enabled. Um, doing this step, what the operator is going to do is uh, reconfiguring the controllers in order to be not connected to Zookeeper anymore without the Zookeeper migration uh, flag enabled and then rolling the controllers for us. At the end of this uh, step of rolling the controllers, um, the cluster will be totally craft based. So the operator is also going to delete uh, all the Kubernetes resources related to the Zookeeper nodes. So deleting the pods, but even the secrets that are storing uh, the certificates for um, the TLS certificates for the connection to Zookeeper or even the PVC if uh, the delete claim is true in the Zookeeper configuration, uh, otherwise the PVCs uh, will be left uh, and the user has to go and uh, delete them manually. So all the kind of Kubernetes resources that today are used in order to run the Zookeeper ensemble. So the last controllers is uh, uh, rolling. At the end of this rolling, we'll see that the Zookeeper pods will be deleted, right? They are terminating. So right now, the class is finally totally running uh, in uh, craft uh, based and uh, we can um, really easily even following uh, how the metadata state uh, is evolving uh, here um, there are some kind of internal state related to a pre-craft state where the operator uh, has uh, um, the, the role of deleting so it understand that everything is craft now I can delete zookeeper and then ending uh, in the uh, craft in the final craft state um, it's also uh, interesting to highlight that there is uh, uh, a warning here so we have this um, uh, warning field uh, to true, which means uh, uh, in the Kafka custom resource there are some warnings. So uh, how we can double check which kind of uh, warnings are here. So let's get uh, our 
my cluster Kafka resource in my project namespace. Let's print the YAML. The reason why there is uh, uh, a warning, one or more warning, um, are explained in this condition. So in the status section, we see that uh, it's saying that uh, in the Kafka uh, custom resource, we can just delete the spec uh, zookeeper because it's not needed anymore. Uh, it's there, but it's not used. And at the same point, uh, the interbroker protocol version, uh, the log message format version uh, are not used in craft based cluster, right? So they can be removed. So the last step that user has to do at this point is removing this section uh, and uh, everything will be kind of fine. Um, of course, um, uh, removing uh, these uh, interbrokers protocol and log message format uh, will um, trigger another rolling because uh, the configuration will be updated. So for the controllers and for the brokers, uh, this configuration parameter um, have to be removed by the, the operator. So say that, as you can see, um, the stream is the operator starting from uh, the release uh, 040 now provides a way to migrate really easily your Zookeeper based cluster um, to a craft based cluster. The thing is, just use the stream ZIO craft annotation, applying a couple of values, uh, and uh, the operator will run everything for you. Of course, um, uh, our documentation uh, has all the details, so uh, please feel free to, to refer to the documentation and for any kind of issue, dubs, or problems, or any feedback, uh, engage with us in the community, uh, on the Slack channel, uh, on the GitHub repo, and uh, we will help you. So we will be happy to help you try to understand what's going on and how the migration is going on, on your side. Thank you very much.